This video is about ellipses. Recall that a circle can be defined as a set of points whose distance from a fixed point is a constant. An ellipse can be defined as a set of points such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points is a constant. The two fixed points are called focuses or foci and the sum of the distances to the two foci is the total length of the string which is held constant as I draw the ellipse. Let's examine the features of an ellipse in more detail. In these pictures the two black dots are the focuses or foci. The red line segment that cuts through the middle of the ellipse in the long direction and passes through the foci is called the major axis. The line segment that cuts through the middle of the ellipse in the shorter direction is called the minor axis. And the two points at the tips of the ellipse where the major axis actually touches the ellipse are called the vertices. An ellipse could be elongated in any direction, but we'll only consider ellipses that are elongated either in the horizontal direction or the vertical direction. Let's find the equation of an ellipse whose foci are at negative c0 and c0 and whose vertices are at negative a0 and a0. This will be an ellipse that's elongated in the horizontal direction. For any point xy on the ellipse, the sum of the distance from xy to the first focus plus its distance to the second focus has to be some constant. And in fact, it turns out that constant has to equal 2a. I'll show you why. If you look at this point right here on the far right tip of the ellipse, its distance from the first focus is going to be 2c plus a minus c. And its distance from the second focus is just going to be a minus c. If you add up c plus c plus a minus c plus a minus c, you get exactly 2a. So let me write out my formulas for distances. The distance from a point xy to the first focus, the point negative c0, is going to be the square root of x minus negative c squared plus y minus 0 squared. And the distance from xy to the second focus, the point c0, is going to be the square root of x minus c squared plus y minus 0 squared. That sum needs to add up to 2a. After a fair amount of algebra, this simplifies to the expression a squared minus c squared x squared plus a squared y squared equals a squared times a squared minus c squared. If we let b squared equal a squared minus c squared, then we can rewrite this as b squared x squared plus a squared y squared equals a squared b squared, and dividing both sides by a squared b squared, this gives us the form of the equation for the ellipse, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Since we got b squared as a squared minus c squared, it follows that b is less than a. In fact, b is half the length of the minor axis. In other words, this point right here is the point 0b, and this point is the point 0, negative b. To see why this is true, let's draw these two right triangles. The sum of the side lengths that I've drawn has to be the total length of the string, so that equals 2a, which means each of these side lengths must be a. Now the base of this triangle is c, so by the Pythagorean theorem, this height squared must be a squared minus c squared. Since b squared is defined as a squared minus c squared, this height must be b. To summarize, for a number a bigger than b, the equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1 represents an ellipse that's elongated in the horizontal direction 
whose major axis terminates in the points minus a0 and a0, and whose minor axis terminates in the points 0b and 0 minus b. Its foci are at the points negative c0 and c0, and the relationship between a, b, and c is that b squared is a squared minus c squared. Equivalently, if we add c squared to both sides and subtract b squared from both sides, we can write c squared equals a squared minus b squared. The way I remember this is that the biggest of the three numbers, a, b, and c, is definitely going to be a. Since a is half the length of the major axis, which is bigger than half the length of the minor axis, and definitely bigger than the length between the origin and one of the focuses. Since a is the biggest, and we have a Pythagorean theorem relationship between a, b, and c, the equation must be b squared plus c squared equals a squared, which can be rearranged to either of these two equations. Now what happens instead if we have a bigger than b still, but this time we're dividing y squared by the bigger number squared, and x squared by the smaller number squared? Well, this basically reverses the roles of x and y in my equation, and so we end up with the major axis on the y-axis, stretching between the points 0a and 0, negative a, whereas the minor axis is going to be along the x-axis, going in between negative b0 and b0, and the foci are going to be here on the y-axis again. So in this case, my ellipse is elongated in the vertical direction. Our previous ellipses were centered at the origin. But what if the ellipse is centered instead at an arbitrary point, hk? Well, then we need to shift everything over by h in the horizontal direction and k in the vertical direction. So instead of the equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1, we're going to have to have x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1 where a is bigger than b. That's for an ellipse elongated in the horizontal direction. If we want an ellipse elongated in the vertical direction, we'll still take a bigger than b, but we'll reverse the roles of x and y, so this becomes x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1 for the center at the origin. And to shift it over, we get x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals 1. I'll draw some pictures below. With some thought, we can label key points. For example, this vertex must be shifted over by an amount a, since a is half the length of the major axis, so it'll have coordinates h plus a, k, while as this vertex will be h minus a, k. This point up here should be h, k plus b, and this one h, k minus b. The foci are at h plus c, k, and h minus c, k. We can label the points on the ellipse that's elongated vertically similarly. Let's write the equation of the ellipse drawn below, and then we'll find its foci. Its major axis is in the vertical direction, right here. Its top vertex is at the point 4, 3, and its bottom vertex is at the point 4, negative 9. Its center is halfway between its two vertices, which is right here at the point 4, negative 3. Finally, I can read off the points at the end of the minor axis. So this one is at 9, negative 3, and this one is at negative 1, negative 3. Since my ellipse is elongated vertically, I know I have an equation of the form x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals 1, with a bigger than b. My center is my point hk, and that's equal to 4, negative 3. a is half the length of the major axis, so that's the vertical distance between this point and this point. I can just take the difference of y coordinates and see that a is equal to 6 b is half the length of the minor axis, so looking at the difference in x-coordinates of these two points, I see that b is equal to 5. 
Throwing that all into my equation, I get that x minus 4 squared over 5 squared plus y plus 3 squared over 6 squared equals 1. The foci are going to be somewhere along the major axis, somewhere above and below the center. To figure out how far they are, I need to use the fact that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So in this case, c squared is 6 squared minus 5 squared, which is 11, which means that c is a square root of 11, which is a little bit bigger than 3. So the two foci are a distance of square root of 11 above and below the center, and so they'll have coordinates of 4, negative 3 plus the square root of 11, and 4, negative 3 minus the square root of 11. This video detailed the anatomy of ellipse, including its major axis, its minor axis, its vertices, and its foci.